Hey, what's up, people of God? I pray that you are continuing to persevere and that you are developing a relationship with Jesus Christ on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, today is the day that we are celebrating the Resurrection Sunday of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that's something to really celebrate and it's something to really respect and look at because Jesus did what he did for you. And so, you know, that's what we're going to speak about today. I'm going to go through a few passages of scriptures and I pray that the word of God is going to bless you in a unique way. I'm going to be starting in the book of John chapter number 11 uh, verses 25 through 26. And then I'm going to move around a little bit. So follow me if you desire. But I want to put a thought in your brain. I want to put a thought on your mind that we're talking about his resurrection. But I want you to take this thing personal. I want you to say my resurrection. You see, we have to take this thing literally personally as our forefathers did. David says the Lord is my shepherd. He took it personal and that's something that we have to do. We have to take God's word and we have to take it personally. That's why people won't change because people are looking at everybody else and what they are doing and what they have and how they have it and how they're acting. Stop looking at people and start looking at yourself because God wants you and he wants to do something unique in you. And so if you are going to experience a power from God, then you need to take your resurrection personal. And so as we go into the word of God, I'm praying that you're looking at this thing really personally. Take your eyes off of everything else and start looking at yourself and looking at Jesus and what Jesus will and has done. And so therefore, in verse number 11, it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm stopping right there. He says, I am. Jesus understood exactly who he was. And we have to understand exactly who we are. Jesus didn't worry about what people said. He didn't worry about how they acted. He didn't worry about what they did. He knew exactly who he was. He says he made a bold statement. Even a four or five year old can understand this. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. And Jesus says, I want to provide this new life to you. But you have to understand that it's me. It flows through me. It's going to flow through me. It comes through me. I've done so much for you to let you know that I will do it. I I love you so much so that I'm willing to not only tell you that who I am, but I will show you who I am. And people of God, that's what we have to do. We have to be willing not to just tell, but show. We have to be willing to walk in our newness, this newness of life that Jesus speaks about. It says, he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Though we may die to our sinful nature, now we can live. And people of God, we have to continue to live. We have to continue to walk in our boldness. Nothing should be able to separate us. Nothing should be able to overtake us. People of God, man, you have to walk in your newness and understand what your newness brings. Your newness brings power. Your newness brings a new anointing. Your newness brings strength that you never had before because that's what the resurrection does. That's what the rising does. I'm rising up out of some situations. I'm facing a new resurrection. I'm facing some newness in my life because Jesus has risen in me. Now he has given me the strength to handle my adversaries. Now he's given me the strength to handle those haters. Now he's given me some strength to deal with some elements. And now he's given me the strength. He says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. I am. And I'm going to transfer this to you people of God, we have to understand who we truly are. We really have to really tap into what God is saying because he's speaking to us personally. Now, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, I am begging and pleading that you get you one because you can't experience what the word of God is saying because the Bible says that the natural man cannot discern or understand the things of the spirit. And so you have to gain this relationship with Christ because Christ desires to have one, but he's not going to force himself on you. He wants a relationship. A relationship is two individuals coming together, loving and caring for one another and understand that each has a position in the relationship. Jesus says, I am, I am. No man comes to the father except through me. And he made that very clear. Also in the teaching, he says, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? That's what it says. Do you believe this? Jesus is challenging you. He's challenging me. He's challenging those that desire to come to him. He says, do you believe? 
Do you believe who I am? Do you believe what I can do and what I have done? You see, if you don't believe, then you're fooling yourself. If you're not believing in him, you're sitting up here living, living a lie. And you have, it starts with your belief. You have to truly believe. Look yourself in the mirror and do you see Jesus? Look yourself in the mirror and do you see his spirit? Is his spirit living in you, people of God? Understand this, that it takes that. It's going to take that and then some because the devil walks to and fro seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, you're calling on his name, but that doesn't mean you're not going to be challenged. Yeah, you're believing in Jesus, but that doesn't mean the battle is over. Yeah, you say you're confessing Jesus with your mouth and believing in your heart, but I guarantee you the enemy, he's waiting on you just like he waited on Jesus when he attacked Jesus for 40 days and 40 nights. But Jesus understood who he was and we we have to understand who we are. Yeah, you're taking a lot of mess. You're going through a lot of things, but you re I'd rather go through my mess with Jesus. I'd rather go through my mess with a resurrection. I'd rather deal with the adversary with Jesus rather than without Jesus. And so we have to understand who we truly are. And so as I go into the book of Romans, chapter number eight, verse number 11, it says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, it's an if, if he, what does the if mean? That means you have to make a choice that you, that you desire for Jesus to live in you. And if you make the choice to say, yes, here he is, here Jesus is standing right before you and he's standing and saying, I am willing and I desire to come on the inside of you so you can handle these things that you're going to face. What are the things, these earthly challenges, these dilemmas, world, the world within itself, the world within its ways, the things that we see. You see, people of God, we have to understand the strength that we have. Don't let sin bother you because you have a greater that lives in you. Understand that God brought you out of sin and just because he brought you out of sin that doesn't mean you're not going to deal with sin. And so when people are cussing and fussing and lying and cheating and stealing, governments are doing what they're doing. Don't act surprised, people of God, because that's what sin does. We have to stand firm. You have to understand that I have, we have, we have been resurrected. I have a deliverer. I have a savior that lives on the inside of me that enables me to handle the things that I see, that enables me to handle the things that I hear. I can't let the, I can't let sin activity overtake me because I came out of it. I know what it does, but I have to understand that I have power over it. I'm more than a conqueror. It's greater. It's a greater that lives within me. And I have to walk in the greatness of who he is because that's what he has predestined. And that's what he is shaping and molding us to do. And so it says, he who rose, who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. He says, I give life. I'm going to give life to you. And that's what we need. We need to accept the new life that, that Christ provides for us. We, we need to accept the new life that, that, that God has for us. Walk in your newness, people of God. Understand that you are a new creature in Christ. Understand that you are a newness. The things that you once desired to do, the things that you don't want to do, Christ gives you the ability to overcome that. Christ gives you the ability to walk and move and breathe and overcome and take and over and, and, and overtake and proclaim your victory, proclaim your righteousness, proclaim who you are, proclaim your victory. Know that all things through Christ, it strengthens you and enables you to handle whatever it is that the enemy is trying to dish out. We have to understand who we are. People of God, Romans 5 and 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We need to thank God. We need to thank Jesus on a day-to-day -day basis. While we were yet in our sins, while we were doing the things that we were doing and acting the way we should not have been acting, while I was holding around, talking, talking and walking and, and slipping and tripping and dipping, he still hung for me. He still bled for me. He still loved me when I didn't even love myself. He still, he still, and he still does. And, and, and therefore, I have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Therefore, I have someone that will never leave me and never forsake me. And therefore, people of God, you have to walk in that as well. You have to understand who you truly are and who you're truly living for. You need to make sure that you're representing him on a day-to-day -day basis. I didn't say you wasn't going to make mistakes. I didn't say you were going to make some bad choices, but you have 
have to know that we are improving on a day-to-day -day basis. Why? Because the greater, the strength, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the one that loved me so much so that he showed me that he did. He showed me that he loved me by, by, by hanging on the cross for me when I didn't want to, to acknowledge who Jesus is, who Jesus was, when I didn't want to call out his name, when I didn't want to sing and when I didn't want to pray and when I didn't want to live for him. He says, I'm still going to hang here on this tree for you. People of God, uh, people of God understand that this is your resurrection. It's time for you to rise up. Start, let, stop letting all of these sinful activities and stop letting these people and stop letting the world dictate and say who you not and what you can't do. Jesus says that I am the life and I provide for you a new life, a new resurrection. I'm providing for you a newness. Walk in your newness, people of God. Walk in it. Continue to persevere through it because you can't get to this newness without persevering through it. Jesus says that he is the way. He is the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. You can get upset about that. You can get irate about that. You can cast it down. But the word is what it is. I'm foolish enough to believe in the word of God. And the word of God would change your heart. It would change your mind. It would change your total being. You will, you will be a new individual in Christ. It's all about Jesus. I'm preaching Jesus until Jesus comes back. I dare you and I challenge you to do the same. Walk in your newness. Receive your resurrection and watch what Jesus will do. Pray for me, you guys, and I'm praying for you. And I pray that this word has blessed you. I don't want to be long. I just wanted to encourage you for a minute to let you know that Jesus will provide the peace that you desire to have. Jesus will, pro Jesus will provide the life that you desire to have. And Jesus will change your world like never before. Continue to persevere, people of God. Because great things happen when you do. Put your smile on your face. You are more than a conqueror. Walk in it. I'll holler at you later. It's peace in Jesus always.